Fingerboard features are very awesome, especially cement ones and wooden ones, but there's one problem with those. And that one problem is that when you first make your feature or you buy your feature, your fingerboard will not want to slide on it. So you need to use fingerboard wax, but fingerboard wax costs money, you need to buy it online, and it's relatively hard to find. So today, we are making fingerboard wax at home with pretty much no cost. And by pretty much no cost, I mean it. It is very cheap to do, so I will be showing you how to do it at home. So today, we are going to be making proper fingerboard wax for some of these features. Previously, I've recommended just use candle wax, and that actually does get the job done, but it's still not very smooth. So I normally just take a candlestick and just kind of run it over my feature. That actually really does help your fingerboard slide, but it's still not like the best. I will just show you, it kind of goes on thick, and candle wax generally just isn't very smooth. Even though when wax on wax, it's relatively smooth, but when you have something like metal on wax, it doesn't slide very well. Now I have wax all over my fingerboard. Get it off. It's kind of just sticky when it's on the board part and just doesn't slide very well. So let's make some proper wax. And I think now is a good time to announce that on Christmas day, we are doing a pretty decent sized giveaway. We are going to give away another feature that is almost identical to this one and a cement feature, a finger airboard, and I'm gonna leave the rest a secret. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel because that is one of the things you need to have done before Christmas. On Christmas day, you'll still have time to hit the subscribe button so that you can be entered but may as well do it now just because then you won't need to on Christmas. Anyways, more details coming soon. Now time to make the wax. Step one is to take a soda can. You don't need a soda can, but what we are gonna do is gonna kinda wreck a pot and we don't have any pots that we can wreck right now. So we're gonna be using this. You may as well use something like this because I kinda don't think you have an old pot that you can just wreck. Unless you might, I don't really know. You will also need some butter. This is way more than we actually need, but I have a block of butter so you can actually see it. And then you're gonna need some vegetable oil. We are using olive oil. You can use avocado oil, canola oil. It doesn't really matter. And for the main ingredient, you're gonna need candlesticks. This is gonna be most of the end result is gonna be in this volume. So however much wax you start with is gonna kind of be your end result. Now that I've said that, we are ready to start mixing these together. So time Time to get started, I'm just gonna cut this to make it easier to work with. If you're using a soda can, make sure it is nice and dry or else that'll mess up the recipe. Now that that is good, we need to break our candlesticks a little bit to make it easier to work with. I'm kind of surprised that didn't just crack. Also, you may as well try to get the wick out as best as you can right now because you don't need it. This wax is a little bit strange. It is not like normal wax. Once you have your wax in your soda can or pot, you are able to place it on a burner. We have our heat on about medium low and you don't really want it a whole lot hotter than that or else your wax will start boiling and you don't want that. So keep stirring this until it is nice and clear. Depending on the color of wax you chose, you are able to use any type of candle as long as it's not beeswax. The problem with beeswax is it kind of has a little trace amount of honey in it. You wouldn't really think so but there is just a small little percent of it and also just a different type of wax. It kind of leaves your feature a little bit more sticky, not a physical sticky, but when you go to ollie up on it, your fingerboard is just gonna stick and it won't work very well. So you want to use this type of wax. A few moments later. So our wax is now completely melted. We did get a little bit of burnt wick in there, but that is all right. While our wax is still liquid, we need to cut a little slice of butter off. So we are gonna use a piece of butter about this big for this amount. To make fingerboard wax, you do not need special measurements, just rough guess will get the job done. So place your butter in, it'll start melting right away. For our olive oil, we are using a quarter teaspoon measure. Just 
just because I imagine it wasn't completely filled to the brim, I'm gonna add a little bit more. When I poured our oil in, some of our wax kind of solidified a little bit. So I'm just gonna put this back on the blender to reheat it. So we are ready to pour our finger boyd wax now. I'm using this awesome Lego mold. I found this mold at Michael's and it's pretty cheap. So we are gonna be using this. So the pouring turned out very well. I'm happy all those black bits just ended up in the half-filled last one. That couldn't have worked out any better. We are going to let these sit for around 10 minutes to completely cure. Two thousand years later. Update. These have been sitting for just over half an hour now. They were probably done about 10 minutes ago, but I was just taking a break. So we are ready to pop these out of the mold and see how they turned out. Those look very nice. These turned out even better than I thought they would. So I'm going to put aside the two nicest ones for the giveaway. Again, hit the subscribe button down there and that is one step to be entered into the giveaway. But I'll let you know on Christmas what else you need to do because just being subscribed to the channel does not get you automatically entered into the giveaway. I'll do more details on Christmas. So now time to test our fingerboard wax. First, I'm gonna do it on this wooden ledge because my fingerboard doesn't slide too well on this. Also because I have a little bit of old wax on my fingerboard and wax with no wax kind of doesn't slide for some reason. I don't know why, but let's put some on here. Kind of do it on this edge so then I have a nice ledge there. Now it's feeling better. I kind of had to get through the very bottom layer, which was actually the top layer, because the consistency must have changed a little bit and it must have been pure wax on the surface. Because when I went over with that face layer, it kind of just didn't feel any different. But now that I'm kind of into it a little bit more, it feels quite a bit different. That slides a lot better now. feels a lot smoother. Previously, I just had some candle wax on that, which was definitely better than nothing, but this feels a whole lot better with the fingerboard wax. I'm just getting off some of the old wax that doesn't need to be on there anymore because I didn't have fingerboard wax back then, and then I'll put the new stuff on. So that is how you make fingerboard wax. I think this turned out very well. You can always add more of one thing to get a different consistency. This is just what I did and it seemed to work pretty well. So I'm definitely gonna play around more in the future with different ingredients and see if I can get this even better. But already, this is pretty good. A tip for beginners that I would also have for learning like ollies and kickflips is put a little bit of wax on your tail and nose and that is really gonna make it easier to pop. I hope this video helped you make your own fingerboard wax. Hit the subscribe button down there for future giveaways. Also hit the top video up there because it is also pretty awesome. Bottom video down there is pretty cool as well, but I recommend the top one. Social media links are in the description below and I'll see you in my next video.